good morning so welcome to today's alumni and tomorrow's alumni it so happened that there are more of tomorrow's alumni here than today's alumni but it's fine you know it's only for some time right okay and special thanks to tomorrow's alumni because we could actually get the room reasonably filled up and if we can still fill up the rest of it i will be happy so special thanks also to professor das who is the um, alumni coordinator from the institute side and uh, we have professor jay prakash and professor chandrashekar special thanks to and give them a big hand today is a very special day okay jagdish is okay so many of you possibly kind of know him indirectly but come jagdish now jagdish has formally joined us after many years as a very senior executive at ibm and he looks after all our outreach activities and one of the important things is alum and he has been working day and night on this special thanks to uh, jagdish okay today is a very special day special day for you special day for the institute special day in the larger governance of the institute okay so let me kind of spend a few minutes i think uh, we have another about 15 minutes before ashok suta comes okay so if you really look at it if you look at the definition of an alum okay you will actually find there are two sets of names right so a name actually come there is a noun form of it and the verb form of it right the noun form of it translates to a foster son my friends from us kind of get amused you know quite often we describe you people as kids children and all you know, it's quite you can't do that in us and i kind of keep telling them that look you see alum is a word which you people use also and officially the definition is it is a foster son so you will always remind the children of your alma mater called triple i t b and that is one part of alum the second verb part of alum actually means nourishing okay so triple i t b is a kamdenu from which you will continue to nourish your strength all your life and one of the things you probably may not have kind of you know it but you may not have noticed for any institution not just triple i t b the longest and the largest stakeholder at any time is alumni okay faculty generally remain much longer but still because you know faculty by the time they join they are already 30 plus 35 plus right so they kind of stay maybe for maximum of 30 years but as alum okay so you have maybe 50 60 70 80 90 years post uh, life right <laughs> okay so that's kind of something which you normally don't associate with anyone else and second thing is the number of faculty will always be limited right even in a place like mit you know 1000 faculty but 10000 students and million alumni mit still doesn't have only only the only institute which has a million living alumni in the world happens to be penn state okay most others have about 300000 so you are such an important part of the institution and that is the reason why we want this to be given a formal structure and that is how the alumni association is formed and it's very interesting that uh, you see i went to a college which is called college of engineering gindi okay so see unfortunately because of the powers that be the state politics etc etc uh, you know we just don't know how to get value out of institutions in fact that is the second technical institute or the first technical institute outside europe outside of europe the first technical institute in the world happens to be college of engineering gindi born in 1791 or something like that much before any of the american institutes were formed and the reason why i am saying is that until a few years back the alumni association used to be called old boys association I still I happen to be the topper of the school so I still have a medal but even in 1973 it was still called old boys association only recently they changed it to alumni association and of course the first batch is here and uh, gautam and kalpana you will be surprised to note that when the first batch we had exactly 8 girls out of 136 you know how many we have we have 78 girls and 77 boys or something like that <laughs> there are actually one <laughs> so obviously so it is no longer the old boys association or the old boys and girls association that is good that is actually okay 
but what is important for you is what is that what is the connect between alumni and an academic institution this is something which has even been researched there are papers that have been written and the idea is that this is actually a very different one i'll give you an example you know like uh, other day i happened to be sitting in iob board and uh, saurabh sahai the fourth batch student who used to work for mindry just walked in and he has recently joined gartner and uh, he jokingly said sir i need your blessings and we were sitting in the chairman's office so you know so typical north indian style you know so you kind of touch the feet and etc i said look your blessing the good lord blessings are always there and um, my best wishes and then he said sir you know i actually need your blessings because we have given a proposal to iob i want you to put some words and i said yes and interestingly i told the chairman you know gartner is a great company and saurabh is a, a good uh, person to trusted person etc he got the order but the reason why i am saying is recommending an alum is perfectly considered a good practice but if i recommend my son it is corruption right it's very interesting stuff right so the associate because the reason is when it is going to benefit an individual it is called private so i tell you i sit in the board of bharat electronics and professor balakrishnan for iisc he also sit in the board of uh, bharat electronics we both recommend a 3 crores to check to be written to indian institute of science we sit in the board of a company i did the same thing with bank of india they wrote a check for 1 crore etc you can sit in the organization as a board member and still recommend something to be done for the organization because it is still not considered private because i am not asking for me right it is for the institute right so in that sense your connect with the alma mater will continue forever and you can proudly claim to be the alumni of triple itb and triple itb will continue to hold its title on you all your life and in fact sometimes it can happen it even can hold beyond right it can go to your wife husband sons children etc etc okay so it is a much much longer relationship i want you to understand and i'll spend 5 minutes on what triple itb has done special and i think one of the important things is that uh, while we always had alumni association activity we have now put things in process there's a formal election will stone will have a registered society etc we will even keep the account separately all that will happen so i think you also need to have the right aspiration so two things one is what we have done it right and where you should go okay and you know it's very really interesting you know sometimes it is humbling thanks to people like mr narayan murthy who have been on the board several things in the institute we have not only done it first we have done it well i sit in the boards of several other uh, uh, institutes in the country but this is the only institute where everything we have been doing it on the dot okay so there are institutes which are 15 16 years old where they are still the board the the board meeting is 25th board meeting we are exactly 12 and a half years old last month we completed the 50th board meeting every board meeting gets decided one year ahead and we have not changed one board meeting time we never rescheduled and mr narayan murthy in spite of his schedules he has not missed one meeting of course he handed over charge you all know and what was interesting was thanks to mr murthy we created a board position for the alum on the very day the alum was created february 4th 2001 there are at least two of you sitting here <coughs> you graduated that is the day the first 136 alumni were born and mr gautam hegde okay became a member of the triple itb board and it's interesting formally we are the first institute in the country to have a board representation for the alum several others started much later of course now everybody has this is very interesting and mr murthy when he was on the board of triple itb he was also the chairman of ima he couldn't attend many of the meetings because the meetings were not organized as per his convenience okay so that is something which we have done okay so we have a formal structure of alumni association the moment the alumni were born second most interesting stuff 
So in that sense, you know, Mr. Murthy says that, look, you are a truly 21st century institute because the first batch graduated on 2001, February 4th, right? More interesting stuff. The third batch actually surprised everyone, including Mr. Murthy. He actually quoted this to IAMA. The third batch alum, in the third convocation, they handed over a check of 10 lakhs collected from alumni to the chairman in the convocation. That was something which took even Mr. Narayan Murthy by surprise. He actually went and told IAMA guys, you guys are not doing enough. Look at Triple ITB. And actually, a lot of things started in IAMA. Of course, afterwards, we kind of kind of stopped that because we found that it was putting too much stress on the students. And I've been telling the alumni that, look, for 25 years, okay, we don't want you to write checks, okay. That is even a kind of hidden purposes because after 25 years, you will write checks for $10 million, you know, <laughs> what is the point, getting 1 million rupee, okay. So, but what is interesting is that is what you did, you know, the alumni association here has actually done something which no other institute has done. And the other thing is that, you know, most institute I have been with uh, IIT Kanpur for many years. IASC, actually the Alumni Association started more like 50 years, 50th year. And uh, Gindi Engineering College, which I was mentioning, my own college, the Alumni Association was formed after 125 years. Okay. And the fact that we are doing it after 12 years is something which is very commendable. Right? I think we should give a big hand to the Alumni Office Barriers. Please stand up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, thank you. It's good. And also, we did it well. And of course, you know, uh, uh, we are the one institute where internet was there on day one. So, obviously, our voting was also electronic. Okay. So, it's kind of a lot of good things which we did. Yes. Welcome, sir. Please, welcome. Sorry. Welcome. In the Garden City, you have to welcome people with flowers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Suta. I will probably take another just couple of uh, minutes. I was just kind of giving them a broader context of what alumni do, what alumni association, and a few things which our alumni association have done exceptionally well, you know, like um, on the very first day the alumni were born, that is February 4th, 2001, the board decided that there will be an alum representative in the board. So Mr. Gautam Hegde has been on the board, okay, so it's interesting. And for many of you, uh, places like MIT, Harvard, Yale, etc., the board consists of about 80 to 90 percent alumni. Okay, so that is what, and of course they have a large board, you know, they are not like a board like 10, 15, which we have in this country. Their board membership size is about 150, you know, Tokyo is 150, okay. So maybe at the right time, maybe 25 years later, that is what it is. But I thought that you have done uh, many things. Mr. Suta, they also did something unique. The third convocation, the alumni said that, look, we had to do something. And they collected million rupees and handed over to the chairman at the time of convocation. Okay. Okay. It was really something which was good. Afterwards, I kind of told them to slow down. Because what happened was that, you know, they're still young. You know, it's kind of, you know, 5,000 rupees when you are starting, okay, is a lot of money. So I said that, look, we will collect the checks much later because then we can collect much bigger checks. Okay, so. <laughs> but let me kind of spend a few minutes. What you should keep as aspiration It's important, right? So it's also important as alumni association. What should be your long-term aspiration? And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you will connect will continue at all levels. Emotional connect. I think, um, Mr. Suta, this is the main classroom. And the first semester, all of them do a core course. And uh, because typically the size is about 150, it says 175 chairs. So what my colleague Professor Das has done is, we introduce for efficiency, what is called the seating arrangement. So alphabetically, every student is given a seat. Throughout the semester, 
they sit in the same place. Okay, so some of them actually went back and sat in the same place. <laughs> so you have an emotional connect. I'm sure they will do the same thing to the um, hostel room, etc. There is an emotional connect. There is an intellectual connect. Some of you have been coming and giving talks, giving lectures, etc. And of course, there will be a professional connect in terms of professional associations, etc. But I think. I'll just quote a few things from MIT because MIT has probably done this exceptionally well and as an engineering school, for all engineering schools, MIT is still the greatest uh, inspiration. So this is one of the nice things which you will read in MIT website. The wealth created by MIT alumni, you all know, okay. So. Akamai was created by MIT. I'm just giving an example. Bose is actually created by MIT faculty members, okay? And of course, you know that the Polycom is an MIT. I can go on. There are so many companies created by MIT. If you take the market value or the of the companies today, and if you accumulate all of it, that will be the eleventh largest economy on the world. Right? One institution okay, over the years could create so much wealth that it will become the 11th largest economy in the world. Right? I think that is the kind of aspiration you should have. So 100 years from now, the IIITB alumni would have created more wealth than the GDP of this country today, which is not very high. <laughs> so that is the kind of aspiration you should have. The second thing is that you know you should aspire, you know, remember that we are in the knowledge creation business as well as the wealth creation business. Okay? In terms of wealth creation, we have talked about there is also the knowledge creation. So MIT can claim 78 Nobel Prizes and 45 Rhodes Scholarship. Okay, so I am proud that MIT, our triple IT alumni have gone to MIT for a PhD. Gone to, two of them are doing PhD in UC Berkeley, and you know people have gone to NUS. So people have been going to the great institutions. But the next stage would be the graduate, become faculty members in some of the finest institutions, and win the Nobel Prize. I think that is the kind of aspiration which you need. Okay, so remember both in wealth creation and in knowledge creation okay so that is a kind of aspirational goal the alumni association of any institute should have and to play tv should be next to anyone else not be next to anyone else we should do that mr suta has been taking enormous amount of uh, notes he has been asking me may sending me mail sending me sending jagdish mail etc and be aware that he knows more about you than many of you <coughs> okay and I am so glad that we are also starting something unique starting today. In addition to the alumni association meet, you know, you will have some fun in the afternoon, all that. We also need to have some intellectual stuff. And we are formally launching with Mr. Ashok Suta the star lecture series of the Triple TV Alumni Association. While the student will formally introduce the speaker, I thought I should tell you some unusual things that are there's a special connection between Triple ITB and Mr. Ashok Suta. Lots of interesting stuff. And some of us were there on the launch of Mind Tree. And we were born in the same year. In fact, in less than four months, four week gap. Okay. August was Mind Tree, September was Triple uh, ITB. And uh, I think. Mr. Suta also is another inspiration for you because many times you think entrepreneurs are for people in the 20s, college dropouts, etc., etc. You can actually be an entrepreneur when you are about to be a senior citizen. And that is what he and his team started, Mind Tree. And more interesting stuff is you can be a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> even when you are a senior citizen and that is what he is proving with his happiest minds but there is something more than anything else okay 
we talk about alumni association alumni for students but interestingly the same concept holds even for corporations for some special reasons okay because you know like uh, in the alumni association of an academic institute okay we only talk of those who have graduated right but in an organization people might leave due to multiple reasons because the reason alumni association as such is not a very strong item in corporations but there is something which is very unique about wipro and particularly during the 20 years mr ashok suta was the running the company you know if there is a way by which you can you can calculate remember we talked about the wealth created by the mit alumni similarly if you actually count the wealth created by people who are former wipro employees and i am quite connected to so many of them i kind of there is a branch of the wipro ex wiproites in singapore i actually had dinner with them couple of years back it is a very large quantity and i tell you interestingly you know with no disrespect whether it's tcs or infosys or many other companies the same thing is not true somehow somewhere i think some little magic which mr ashok sutra worked on them in those 20 years many many of the wipro um, alum have actually ended up creating enormous amount of wealth for this country so in that sense there cannot be a better person to kick off our star lecture we are overwhelmingly happy sir and please give him a big hand before you formally introduce